Hey, welcome back. Today's video is about the differences in my loading process between PRS and long range F class, because there are some very distinct differences in how I approach the two. And I wanted to share those with you because I keep getting the question both in the comments here and on the range when I go to a match. So today we're going to talk about the five differences between how I load for PRS and how I loaded for F class long range shooting. Let's get into it. The first difference is bullet grip. I increased the bullet grip for PRS because I don't want the bullets randomly reseating themselves being fed from a magazine. It can happen. I have done it to myself on purpose to see where the limit is. And I want to make sure that I have enough neck grip that that bullet isn't going to change depth when it goes slamming into the feed ramp. The second difference is load development. Load development for PRS is much easier for me than what F class is because I start with powder charge. I do a ladder test and find the right charge. If that right charge results in a rifle performing up to the required standard, I stop there. I don't spend the time to do seating depth and everything else on top of that because the benefit of getting smaller than your standard is marginal. In other words, I can spend my time on more constructive things or shooting more matches rather than wasting rounds doing additional testing that may not prove to benefit me at all. The third thing is bullet pointing. In F class, bullet pointing is the standard. If you aren't pointing bullets, you probably are giving something up. There are a few people out there that don't point bullets and they do quite well, but that's usually at mid range and not at long range. At long range, having a pointed bullet is a great benefit in my opinion and in the opinion of virtually everybody that's ever won an F class national championship. So bullet pointing is the standard in F class. In PRS, it's a different game, a different problem. That little bit of wind drift that you gain might be offset by a slight increase in the SD of the BC, or worse yet, you're dealing with a bullet that just doesn't benefit from pointing at all. F-Class long range is done primarily with one or two different bullets, and those benefit from pointing a great deal. The PRS bullets in 6mm especially don't benefit a whole lot from it. There is a distinct difference. I've made a video about it. You can find it right there. But at the same time, it may not be worth your time and effort to do. In my case, I didn't feel like it was because the average shot distance is only 600 yards out here. And bullet pointing really comes into its own and starts to shine past 900. Think about the number of shots that you take past 900 yards in PRS and see if it's really worth spending a bunch of time on in hopes of getting one point out of every thousand shots because bullet pointing helped you. So the fourth thing on the list is speculative sorting of components. What do I mean? I mean sorting bullets by base to ogive sorting them by overall length, sorting them on a bullet genie or a Yonkey machine, sorting your primers by weight or height or anything else, because that speculative sorting may or may not provide a benefit. It's not going to hurt you, but on the other hand, the time you spend doing it might better be used elsewhere in order to improve your scores. Ultimately, the probability of a benefit from any speculative sorting is so small that it just doesn't make sense for a shooter that is shooting a lot more rounds in PRS and can probably get better in other ways. The last thing is how we deal with our actual physical loading process, our sensitivity to variation. For example, the powder charge. The V4 gives you a plus or minus 0 0.02 grains charge with the green light on. For me in PRS, that green light on is good enough. In F class, I cut that tolerance down to half that big just on the speculation that it might benefit me for one shot out of a thousand or 10,000. On the other hand, I never saw it in real life or could even articulate that there was any benefit whatsoever. I did it because there was a possibility that it could benefit me at some point. And that seems a little, well, ridiculous to most of us that are reasonable, but we did it anyway in F class. In PRS, it makes no sense whatsoever. So I'm not doing it. Likewise, sorting by seating pressure on my 21st century hydro press no longer exists in my world. I don't sort the rounds by what their exact seating pressure was. I have a range that is acceptable. As long as it's in the acceptable range, it goes in the ammo box and gets shot in the match. If it's outside of the acceptable range, it gets marked and put aside as a fowler. We're still sorting based on seating force, but only in a very gross manner. In the end, you have to have an eye on the probability of benefit of any loading process. Doing only what is necessary to achieve the desired outcome is all you have to do. And doing anything more is a waste of effort and time that could be spent elsewhere making you better. Leave me a comment below. Do you think I'm crazy or am I doing the right thing? Until next time, shoot straight, think about whether something benefits you or not, and I'll see you in the next video.